Caballeros, ustedes se recibieron sus instrucciones. Y aquí está bien, aquí no. Aquí está bien, aquí no. De la cintura para arriba. De que no hable el limpia. Escúchame, cuídate. Listos, vámonos. So here we go. Tiafimo Lopez. In a new weight class. Coming off the shocking upset loss. Andre, he told us the other day the first step to success is failure. I think much could be revealed early on considering how he came out in that first round in the shocking loss to Cambosis. Yeah, he's got to learn from it. He was reckless in the Cambosis fight. He very, uh, you know, he assumed that he was going to hit Cambosis and Cambosis was going to fall over. That wasn't the case. Let's see if he learned his lesson. Kampa is not on Lopez's level, but he's a strong enough and stiff enough test to let us know where Lopez is at mentally and physically. Pedro Campos started his career 27 and 0. His only career loss was a seventh round knockout in 2017. He's 7 0 and 1 since then. And he's coming off of back to back knockout wins against undefeated fighters. You see the speed difference right away. Tiafima Lopez is the quicker fighter. Able to get his shots off before Campos even able to retaliate with anything. Took that dip to the left and had the uppercut come in. Big shots that just missed. The other question is, does the power carry for Tiafima Lopez from 135 to 140? Huge fan support here in Vegas for Teo. Chan has started up in round number one. Sold out event center here at Resorts World. Kampa getting that, as he'd like to describe it, intelligent pressure. Getting to the inside, letting his hands go. Now trying to close the gap. Come on, hands free, hands free. Miles Levis, Miles Levis. Sapatos, Sapatos, step back, step back. Kampa's being his. Defensively responsible as he possibly can. Still applying pressure. There's a right hand available for him over the top. Tails looking to close the distance. With that lead hand down, he can sneak a right hand right over the top. Two punch combination from Lopez. I think it's too early for Lopez to have that left hand down and that shoulder roll position. The mistake that young fighters make is that Mayweather didn't do that until he had control of the opponent and the fight. Lopez doesn't have control at this moment. That shoulder roll a big part of your lab breakdown for the success of Tiafimo, Timmy. Well, that's what he likes to use, primarily the shoulder roll. Goes to the body as he steps forward here in the closing moments of round number one. Mm. And a short left hand on the inside caps it. Tiafimo Lopez had a 16 to 8 connect advantage over Pedro Campa in round number one. I tell you, it's good just to have him back. The energy he brings, you can hear that crowd even in round number one. Tiafimo, no matter what you think of him, has that it factor, but it's one fight in 22 months up until that first round that we just saw. We asked him about it the other day. He said, listen, the business played me. Yeah, stop, stop. And right now, the business ahead is where he can go at 140 pounds. If he gets through Tampa tonight, who knows, maybe a date on Heisman night, maybe a title opportunity against Josh Taylor, depending on what happens in the fight and the rematch against Jack Cattle. But the opportunities exist at 140 pounds for premier fights against big names. I just spoke with Teofimo Lopez Sr. He says, look, I want him to keep jabbing. He's going to keep just winning these rounds, touching him with that jab. The knockout will come, and I see it being an overhand right. 37 of his 58 punches thrown to this point a minute into round two have been the jab. Tried to go underneath with the right hand, and the sweep across with a rare hook. Compa fires off the straight right of his own. Good head movement from Lopez and a two punch combination working his way off the ropes. And a sweeping right hand. No, no, stop, 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 stop. 
But this is the oh, test, even early test, is that you want to see if the punches of Lopez have the same effects as they did with the guys at 135. Now it's early, we'll see, but right now, Kampa is taking these, fight, these punches very well. He's not matching speed for speed, skill for skill, but he's still in the pocket, and he's landing some shots. As he did just there, as he said he would step to him. And, and he's making that. Teo extremely uncomfortable right now with the work rate and the pace that he's choosing to fight this fight. Putting a lot of pressure on him mentally. So it's going to force Lopez to make adjustments and then make more adjustments. That's what we're looking for right here. He said he only sparred two weeks for this fight. That could come back to bite him. For those that didn't hear the conversation earlier, that came about in an interview he had with Mark Regal. He did not deny it, but he said, listen, I know what's best for me. Tim, your reaction to that of only getting in two weeks of sparring in a lead up to a main event fight like this? You can't, you can't do two weeks of sparring, especially 10 rounds against a fighter that throws 80 punches plus a round. You know, you need at least four to five weeks of sparring. Good quality rounds stop, stop, stop. to get prepared for a fighter like this. We're going to see his conditioning as this fight continues on in the later rounds. Stop, stop, stop. Absolute packed house here at the event center at Resorts World Las Vegas to see the return of Teofimo Lopez against the game and gritty Pedro Campa. Lopez with a 36 to 21 connect advantage. Dre, you brought up an interesting conversation about a new weight class. Does the power carry? And Timmy, you are a world champion in this weight class at 140 pounds. Things get different to the layman. They say, wait a minute, it's only five pounds. He was a champ at 135. He weighed in at 138. But in this division, Josh Taylor is a big guy. Regis Probe is a big guy. Ramirez is a big guy. But, but, but to Dre's point, Taylor was a big 135 pounder. So he was a lot bigger. Big boned it, you know, so when he hit guys, they felt it. But at 140, he's actually the smaller guy tonight. He's not the bigger man tonight. Compass is the bigger man. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to knock these guys out. He has to break Compa down, and what he has to do is go down to the body first, then, then land those kill shots up top. Well, that's the kind of shot that Lopez needs to land. Box, box, box. Surprise, Compa. He can't stand there and just unload like he did at 135. At least not right now. Oh, he's, he's having fun he's for a moment here, Trey, right, isn't he? Right, but it's the skill, 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 then power. That's what's getting Coppa's attention. But Coppa's throwing two. <laughs> Bernardo's in the corner of Coppa. Manny Robles told me he needs to keep his left hand up because Teofimo is looking for that overhand right, and his shots can't be looping. They've got to be straight, short shots. First time they have worked together. Manny Robles, of course, veteran trainer, who won the heavyweight championship of the world with Andy Ruiz, the upset of Anthony Joshua. Stop, stop, stop. I like what Lopez is doing. I'm feeling the flavor. Do what you got to do. Just don't do it with your back to the ropes. Do it in the center of the ring. You give a guy who has slower feet and slower hands like Kampa that stability by you being up against the rope, he'll feel confident to unload with both hands. But he's in deep water when he's in the center of the ring. Heads came together on the inside. Kampa's gaining more confidence coming Good forward. Shot. He's saying he don't, he don't feel anything. That's what he's saying. He's taking these big punches from Teo. And he's coming back, or at least trying to come back with his offense. Here he comes. Stop, stop. Lopez shouldn't get frustrated by that. He should happily oblige and continue to deliver what Kampa's asking for. No, 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 no. He dances in the corner after showing that upper body head movement. Round four, Lopez and Kampa. 
Tampa had a fight high for him. 15 punches landed in that last round, but this was the moment from Tia Fimo. This, this Played a little, little trick shot. Yep, yeah, a little trick shot right there with the shoulder to lift the chin. You see the ref on the opposite side. He didn't see the shoulder lift. And you see the right hand of Tiafimo Lopez laying clean on Compa. Just creating a little bit of space, Dre, that's all. Yeah, why not? Right. <laughs> that's illegal, but it's yes, all right. good. Anything <laughs> it takes. Listen, wrap around that right hand as well here to start round number four. Very little body work from Tiafimo Lopez tonight. It would suit him if he was to go down to Compa, to Compa body to wear him down a bit. Tiafima Lopez is in a very, very good groove right now. I wish he would pick his left hand up and throw more left hands to set up the big shots and stay off the ropes because that can be dangerous, like we said. But other than that, I think he's boxing a perfect fight. He seems very relaxed, and he seems to be having fun in there. And right now, Kampa is competitive, but he's not winning these rounds. I completely agree with the assessment of relaxed and having fun, and we've seen that throughout the early goings. And sometimes, Tess, rest and being away from the Step game up. causes you to come back a little bit different. Sometimes you got to miss it. He told us he's at peace, the happiest that he's been. Uh, interesting dynamic when you're around the team, the rather large team. I think he showed up with 17 in the entourage to the fighter production meetings. But he is much more in control and guiding his own course than he's ever been. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. No, 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 no. Okay. Lopez gets credit for his explosiveness, his showmanship, but he's got an IQ. And you see it on display right now. He realizes that I might not be able to get Kampa out at least right now with one shot. So I have to go into the toolbox and show some other things. <laughs> Using the cross guard defense right there. High cross guard. And then Kampa saying, I got a chin on me. Can't hurt me. That's the way you stay involved in the fight. You Kampa, you got to psych yourself out. If you come in here with the mentality that you're going to get knocked out, you can get knocked out. But he's came in there with the mentality, you can't hurt me. As he presses forward, Dre. Yeah, his, his success is going to come on the back half of six if he's still around. So he's got to put some money in the bank. He's not putting as much money as Lopez is putting in the bank, but he's got to have something in there in hopes that he can wear Lopez down and start to land some big shots. And right now, Lopez is landing the big shots. Good finish here to round four from Tiafimo Lopez. You see the speed difference. Tiafimo Lopez told us this week, you never admit defeat, but you have to admit the lessons in defeat. Perhaps lessons learned from what happened last November when George Cambosis took the four lightweight belts from him. Of course, Cambosis then gave way to Devin Haney. Devin Haney now the undisputed lightweight champion of the world. They will have the rematch on ESPN from Australia coming up this fall. Lopez in control early. Shooting the first four rounds and Dre scorecard. 77 of 47 connect advantage. He's landed 50% of his power punches. Just spoke with Teofimo Lopez Sr. He said, look, I just want him to keep jabbing. He's timing him well, but he's got to be careful because they don't call him La Roca for nothing. He hits hard. 22 knockouts in his 33 wins. Mm. There's a right hand from Shoulder Teofimo. Roll. Shoulder roll right hand. Tried to place the uppercut that time. That punch is thrown and landed when you've timed your opponent, their movements, and that's exactly what Tiafimo Lopez has done right now. Stop, stop, stop. Able to block much of that work and then slip to the inside. And there's an uppercut that came in at the end of that combination from Kampa. See, but Kampa, what he's doing is fight. what he's doing is he's letting off the power and now he's just letting his hands go. He's just trying to touch tail. No, no, no. Stop, stop. Trying to outwork him. You can touch a fighter, you can hurt him, and if you can hurt him, you can knock him out. 
but loading up and allowing Lopez to continue to evade your shot is not going to get you anywhere. He's got to do exactly what Tim Bradley just stated. Looks like Lopez is taking a round off. Yep, I was just about to and say Tampa that. Tampa is taking advantage and landing more shots. There's no doubt about that. If you look at the output from Lopez compared to the earlier rounds, good exchange off the ropes. And now pot shotting off the hip with that jab. Here in the corner, Kampa, you had to know this is how the fight was going to go. You had to know that your guy was going to take punishment early. That's, that's hope that he can take the shot and just keep pressing, keep chipping, keep banging away in hopes that you're on the other side of six and you might get yourself back in the fight. Start with round number six from Vegas, Lopez and Kampa. Late money came in heavily on the big favorite Tiafimo Lopez, as it did on the under total rounds, which would be 90 seconds through this round. You see the punches last round? Dre, you made the point. You felt like it was a round that Lopez clearly was taken off. He only threw 43 punches there. It was 15 of 43. That's his low output of the fight to this point. Manny Robles has to continue to inject the belief into his charge. Pedro Campa, that Lopez is getting tired. You've taken the best shots. Keep pressing, you're wearing him down. Whether that is true or not remains to be seen, but that's the message that needs to come to Kampa as he's, if he's going to have a shot later in this fight. Stop. Manny Robles just told me he had a conversation with Pedro Kampa. said, look, I don't want you to allow Teofimo to set his feet. You've got to be more active. You've got to keep pressuring him and not allow him to think you're still in this fight. I'm impressed with the technique from Kampa. Honestly, before he got with... Manny Robles, he was all over the place, falling all over his feet, jabbing, lunging forward. He's underneath himself. He seemed to be very underneath himself, and very calculated tonight, picking his spots wisely, when to attack and when not to attack, Lopez. The perfect time to attack Lopez is after he gets done punching, because he stays there. Partially blocked by Pedro Campa. But Campa sees these punches coming. That's why they have no effect. Lopez has a great jab, fellas. He's got a great jab to the head, to the body. He's educated. I don't think he uses it enough because he's got those sports center top ten left hooks and right hands. But he should follow Ooh. along with that left hand a little bit more. A defensive movement and then the right uppercut. Mouthpiece just came out. Come out, here we go. <laughs> what? He just picked it up. Yeah, we're not washing it I all. mean, what? <laughs> we're just putting it right back in the mouth. <laughs> Disgusting. See, Lopez now going after that eye, that lead eye. The left eye of Kampa is starting to swell rapidly. That's discouraging right there. Ooh. That's discouraging. Jab, jab right off the hip right there. There. Yes, that's discouraging. But you just missed a bunch of oh. shots. Then you got hit with those Stop. kind of shots. That's disrespectful from Teofimo Lopez. The head movement has been <laughs> masterful here in this sixth round by Lopez. <laughs> Small talk is full of facts. It's a division at 140 pounds that went from Josh Taylor being the undisputed king to the business of boxing now having Taylor with two belts with Progre and Zepeda mandated to fight for the WBC with Jose Ramirez, who was in position. He has some personal plans coming up. So oh! put down. And there is the knockdown scored in the opening moments of round seven. Beautiful up jam. Takeover says he wants to take back his lofty status. 
Let's see how he closes the show. Short right hand. One two combination. A lot of time to work with here. Cop is not only switching hurt, stances. He's, up. he's not only hurt, he's busted up. See it in his face. See it in his nose. His nose is swollen. And he's got some tough decisions to make because he's not responding to those shots the way that he was in the first three or four rounds. You see bad swelling on his face, especially at left side, but he's coming forward before they tie up. Still half a round to go here in round seven. Taylor Fight. Mike Pierce has to continue to pour it on just the way he did when he got the knockdown. He didn't load up. It was boxing. It was a 2-1 combination that set Compa down. He didn't try to throw it hard, but it landed hard. He needs to try to do the same thing right mm -hmm. now. Showing out with the defense. Back into the mix. Squared up, wiggling, stepping over, feeling it right now. And yes, having fun on there is Lopez. Oh. Switching stances, stepping over, coming with the right hand. Blocking Kappa's efforts. Ooh. Left uppercut, right uppercut, short right drives down. A lot of blood coming from the nose of Kappa. Headshot after headshot, short oh right hand. God. A beat down in round seven. The take back, he just took what he wanted there in that round. Yes, he did. And here it comes. Let the celebration begin. Old school Tiafimo backflip. Seventh round TKO, a hug for Dad. They've been through a lot, especially the ride up, the great ascent, the call in their shot against Loma, the shocking upset that they had a bounce back from, and now this. Started with the knockdown, finishes with the TKO in round seven. A lot of brutality going on in this round. Beautiful right cross right there. Nice up jab right up the middle. That was so fast and so accurate. Beautiful counter right there by Tiafimo Lopez. Catch, boom, boom. Kampa never saw that jab coming, that up jab. Beautiful shot right there from Tiafimo Lopez. And that came after six and a half rounds of punishment. Didn't come early in this fight. Tail may have to go about getting the knockouts at 140 pounds a little bit different than he did at 135. Now he knew he had Kampa going. So then you see him transform into the old Teofimo Lopez at 35, standing right there, planting his feet, knowing that if I just get the right shot in there, I'm gonna get Tony Weeks to do just what he did, step in and save Pedro Kampa. Three straight overhand rights at short range, right to the temple is what got Weeks to stop the fight, but it was that spectacular, speedy Viper attack of the 2-1 combo, the up jab, that started the downhill ascent and got the victory that everybody expected in that fashion tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside Resorts World Las Vegas, it is time for the Bud Light celebration decision. Tony Weeks calls a stop to this bout at two minutes, 14 seconds of round number seven for your winner by technical knockout. And now the WBO International and NABF Junior Welterweight Champion, the takeover. He has said this week he loves the growing, the teaching, the pain, the hardship, being married to the sport right now. Went through a lot of that pain. Now he's back where he wants to be with his hand raised and another knockout victory. But what will be next?